Welcome to this lecture on scaling electron microscope. Myself, Professor Piyut Joshi, working as an assistant professor in chemical engineering department of KK Vag Institute of Engineering Education and Research. Welcome you. Today we are going to discuss about the scanning electron microscope. Before starting the scanning electron microscope, let us discuss about the microscopy comprises of the tools that can be used for the uh, see that can be used for the seeing or observing image or the uh, of the microscopic objects and even the micromolecules. There are a uh, wide variety of microscopic tools available for the studying or in observing the microscopic objects. Light microscopy is the simplest form of microscopy and it includes all forms of microscopic methods that use the electromagnetic radiation to achieve the magnification. In this lecture, we are discussing about the scanning electron microscopy. In light microscopy, we use the glass for bending and focusing the light. Refraction, that is the bending of light, is the manifested manifestation of the different light velocities in different materials. The in light microscopy, we use the light for the uh, as a lamp source and focused on the specimen by the condenser lens. The light diffracted by the sample is then collected by the objective lens and it generates a real time magnified image of the specimen that we are going to discuss working of light microscope in the next slide. This image is further magnified by the eyepiece. And the resolution of this optical microscope is around 0.17 microns. If we see the uh, light microscope, this is the eyepiece from where we are observing the specimen by focusing the objective lens. The specimen is generally rested on the stage. The stage is uh, focusing the light by the condenser lenses and this condenser lens, we can adjust the <clears throat> wavelength of the light focusing on the specimen by the condenser diagram by adjusting the con condenser focusing knob. We can focus, the, focus on the specimen by the specimen focusing knob. This is the schematic of a compound microscope showing its <coughs> showing the different components of a light microscope. Let us now discuss the need of electron microscope. As we discussed the optical microscope in last slide, it has the limited resolution due to the light diffraction. The optical resolution of microscope can be estimated by the formula optical resolution, which is given by lambda by two into Na. The, where the lambda is the wavelength of the light and Na is the numerical aperture of the lens, which is usually one, usually taken as one. The average wavelength of white light is around 500 nanometer and the best possible resolution is thus a few hundreds of nanometer or microns. One of the way to improve the resolution of the microscope is by decreasing the wavelength of the light Inside, inciding on the specimen. In reality, uh, nobody want to deal with the UV light due to its the adverse effects. <clears throat> Instead, we can use the electron beam in the microscopy and this microscopy is generally abbreviated as the electron microscopy. The use of electron beam or electron wave is a unique medium that can be used for imaging. In this electron microscopy, we can use the electrons, which is accelerated in, due to the uh, high voltage and high energy beam of electron we are using in the electron microscopy. The wavelength thus created is far shorter than the white light. And Thereby, we are achieving the maximum resolution possible in the electron microscopy. If we take example for an 
uh, electron beam produced from a 20 kilo volt gun, the wavelength is around 0 0.6, 0 0.06 nanometer. <coughs> the corresponding resolution is lambda by 2 into Na, that is lambda into 2 and numerical aperture is 1. So the corresponding resolution of the electron microscopy is around uh, 0.3 angstrom or 0 0.03 nanometers. If we consider this resolution, it can be used to image a species as small as 0 0.03 nanometer or 0 0.3 angstrom units. The most of the atoms are in the size of 2 to 3 angstroms. Let us now discuss about the milestones in the development of the electronic microscope. In 1926, the first electromagnetic lens was developed by the Hans Post. After five years, in 1931, the German physicist Hans Raska and his colleague, electrical engineer Max Noll, constructed the prototype of electron microscope, which is capable of 400 power magnification. The apparatus was the first demonstration of the principles of electron microscopy. In 1931, Reinhold Rudenberg, the scientific director of Siemens, obtained the patent for the electron microscope. After two years, in 1933, Ernst Ruska built an electron microscope that exceeded the resolution attainable with an optical or light microscope. In 1932, Ernst Lubke of Siemens and Halske built and obtained, obtained image from a prototype electron microscope, applying the concepts prescribed in the Rudenberg patent application. After five years, in 1937, a firm finance work by the Ernst Raska and Bodo von Boris and employed Helmut Raska, who is brother of Ernst Raska. They developed the applications for the microscope, especially with the biological specimens. In 1937, Manfred von Aldrin pioneered the scanning electron microscope. Later, after one year, in 1938, the first practical electron microscope was constructed at the University of Toronto by Ellie Franklin Burton and his students Cecil Hall, James Hillier, and Albert Priebus. In 1939, Siemens has produced the first commercial transmission electron microscope. Although the contemporary electron microscope are capable of 2 million power magnification as the scientific instruments, they remain based upon the Raska's prototype. And for this, the Ernst Raska received the Nobel Prize in Physics of 1986 for his fundamental work in the area of electron optics and for the design of the first electron microscope. Let us now discuss the various interactions of the electron with a thin specimen. If we see various objects around us, but how exactly do we see them? If we ask ourselves few questions like this, how does a light microscope allow us to see a magnified image of a specimen? Or if we see why the milk is white and water is transparent, the answer to all these questions is the same. It is due to the interaction of the light with the matter alters one or more properties of the light that it receives. We cannot, we can see the objects around us because they absorb, reflect or scatter the visible light. A specimen becomes visible only if it brings about changes in the radiation used to visualize it. So in electron microscopy, it's possible due to the interaction of the electrons as shown in the figure. The different interactions of the electron with matters bring about the changes in the electrons and generate the new electron with different energies. 
a specimen will will be transparent to the electrons and if does not scatter them and therefore be invisible when analyzed using electron microscope so this figure shows the different processes that results through the interaction of the electron with the specimen during this uh, interaction of electron with the specimen some elastic scattering of electrons can be possible if we consider the elastic scattering the scattered electron do not lose their energy the scattering only causes the change in electrons trajectories elastic trans scattering gives a strong forward peak in a thin specimen on the other hand some scattering is inelastically the in in inelastic scattering is the process that result in the loss of energy of the primary electron fall under the inelastic scattering category there are several secondary effects this include the phenomena that are brought uh, brought about by the primary electron beam the phenomena that we are concerned with here are the secondary electrons back scattered electrons and characteristic x rays let us now discuss the secondary electrons the secondary electrons as i showing here by the pointer the secondary electrons are ejected from the atoms in the specimen the term is usually used for the electrons that have energies below 50 electron volts such electrons can therefore include the primary electrons that lose their energies through the successive scattering and reach the reach the surface of the specimen the secondary electrons are produced in the abundance and form the basis for the working of the scanning electron microscopy next is the back scattered electrons also called as pac the primary electrons that do re retain substantial energy before escaping the specimen surface the back scattering is a function of the atomic number wherein sample with larger atomic number gives the brighter signal and vice versa some visible light or it is also called as the cathodo luminescence an electron can knock off a valence electron from the colliding atom creating an electron hole pair an electron falls back into the hole releasing the excess energy as light and this is nothing but the visible light whereas certain characteristic characteristics x rays are also generated during the interaction of the electron with the specimen if an electron is knocked off from the inner shells of the atom an electron in the higher energy shell can fill the vacancy in the lower energy state the energy associated with the inner electron transition fall in the category of x ray wavelength region now we are ready to see the working of the electron microscope <coughs> in uh, in scanning electron microscopy an electron beam is focused as we discussed this electron beam is generated due to the high high voltage high voltage uh, electron beam gun and this electron beam is guided and focused by the magnetic lenses on the specimen as shown in the figure so we we are using the magnified and condenser lenses to focus the electron beam on the specimen after the electron beam is incident on the specimen as we discussed secondary electrons back scattered electrons and uh, some characteristic x rays are generated which are detected by the detector and it it is then further processed by the photomultiplier and crt that is cathode ray tube for viewing and crt monitor is also possible so the electron microscope is divided into two parts first is the microscopy section and second is the electronic section or the 
uh, observing section of the microscope. The focus beam of electron is then scanned across the surface of the specimen in a raster fashion. So if we see the raster fashion, that is how the electron beam is passing over the specimen. This scanning is achieved by the moving the electron beam across the specimen surface by using the deflection and scanning coils. The number of secondary electrons are produced by the specimen at each scan point are plotted to give the two dimensional image. So if we see the low intensity is shown like this and high intensity is shown like the uh, lighter image of the same. In principle, any of the signal generated at the specimen surface can be detected. Most electron microscopes have the detectors for the secondary electron and the backscattered electrons, as we already discussed. So this we already discussed, the signals of uh, scanning electron microscope. Let us now discuss the advantages and disadvantages of scanning electron microscope. If we consider the advantages, almost all kinds of samples conducting and non-conducting can be characterized and using the scanning electron microscope. Whereas the strain coating is required when we are using the non-conductive uh, specimen in the scanning electron microscope. Based on the surface interaction, no requirement of electron transparent sample. So the scanning electron microscopy is based on the surface interaction here and that is why no requirement of electron transparent sample is need, required. Imaging at all directions can be possible by having the rotation of the sample and we can produce the 3D image of the specimen by using the scanning electron microscope. On the other hand, the scanning electron microscope has several disadvantages like low resolution, usually above a few tons of nanometers and usually required a surface stain coating with metals for electron conduction of the specimen. So this is about the working of the scanning electron microscope in detail. Thank you for your patient listening. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.